Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for yet more dedicated legacy action. Today we are playing a deck that I played a little while ago that I quite enjoyed, and that was the Hammer Time deck, which is a bit interesting to me. Like, obviously, Hammer Time is a big thing in modern, I hear, but in legacy, it's a bit of a different beast. So, what does this deck aim to do? Well, it wants to put big Colossus Hammers on things like Ornithopters or Esper Sentinels or Pure Steel Paladin and turn them sideways and kill your opponent in very short order. So, what does it do when it's not doing that? Well, we've got a few other things we, we can do backup plan wise. We've got a Sword of Ice and Fire, we've got a Stoneforge Mystic for Calder Complete. Uh, we've got a Nettle Cyst, which is probably going to be quite big, and we've got Urza's Saga, which is obviously just a great card and sort of ties the whole room together. It can go and find us a few silver bullets. Uh, you, you can find us the silver bullet of the Pit Needle or the Shadow Spear if we need the life gain on that. Or it can just find us our Colossus Hammers, or it can find us mana, or it can find us a creature to then hold one of the things. And it also just makes some massive yachts that we can swing into our opponent with. So essentially, opening hands with this deck, you're probably looking at having things like Pure Steel Paladin, Stoneforge Mystic, Sagada Zay. These are the sort of the things you really need as your engines. Now, this version of the deck is a little bit different to the previous ones I played. This no longer has Ink Moth Nexus. We're instead running Wasteland. I've seen a few builds online that have been running the three Wastelands, but I really wanted a fourth one because I didn't want to have 19 lands. I thought I wanted 20 lands where four of them are spell lands, and a lot of the spells that people were running instead of the fourth Wasteland, I think, would just be better as Wastelands because last time I ran this deck, I lost to Maze of Ith a few times and stuff like that. So I think I really wanted the fourth Wasteland. Now, I don't know if I'm going to miss Ink Moth Nexus. I might do, but that's something we're going to play and find out. The Steel Shaper's Gift is also new. I've seen a lot of people putting this in. It makes sense. It goes and finds us some of our things we're looking for, mainly mainly the Colossus Hammer, but it can find the other bits and pieces. So it's kind of like another stone forge. Just build your own stone forge to guide us aid in Steel Shaper's Gift. Um, and I'm running Mother of Runes, which I know some people from the list I've seen online aren't running, but I think Mother of Runes sort of ties the whole room together by making sure that your threat isn't just easily answered. One thing I do like about this deck that does come up quite often is Esper Sentinel's ability isn't pay one, it's pay X where X is its power. So slapping on like a Colossus Hammer on this means you're going to be drawing cards whatever your opponent casts uh, spell wise, anyway, as long as it's not a creature. So that's quite cool. Other than that, nothing really to say about the deck. It's relatively straightforward. You want to turn guys sideways as quickly as possible. It's much more like a combo deck than an aggro deck in my opinion. But the backup plan is sort of slightly fairer aggro stuff. But uh, okay, let's go to the sideboard. I've opted for a very simple sideboard. Four lane on the void, because when you need to beat a reanimator deck, you need to beat a reanimator deck. And lane on the void doesn't necessarily beat them, but it usually slows them down a few turns, which is all we need really, because our deck is aiming to clock in the first few turns of the game. Deafening silence. Storm decks are faster than us. We want to be able to stop them. Oops or spells can obviously outrace us, so we need something for them. Although we're probably just going to lose that matchup most of the time. If we bring in the ley line and the deafening silence, we've at least got some some play in that. Sometimes you need to kill creatures. That's why we have these four horribly mismatched sorts of plowshares that Mana Traders gave me. So let's have a look at these. Um, so things like death and taxes, um, they're going to have a lot of creatures that can get in your way and gum up the works. Things like Kataki they can bring in, so these are going to be for that. And then we have these four March of Otherworldly Lights. Now this is a card that looks fine, but it's actually been pretty impressive when I've been playing it lately. I played it in a paper tournament the other day and it single-handedly won me around. It can hit as a saga for just white mana, which is nice. But mainly it's there for things like Chalice, because this deck is quite cold to Chalice, as you can probably guess. If you go like 1-1-1-1-1-1. One, 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 one. So, like, this whole line of the deck is one drops. So we can definitely get rolled by a chalice, so that's why we have to bring these in. So we ideally don't want to play against the sort of chalice-y, prison -y decks. And that's it, really. Um, pretty straightforward, simple deck, but it's awfully fun to play, in my experience. So we're going to jam it into a league and see how we do. Okay, we're into round one. This is our opening hand. Now, this needs a second white source to function. I have two draws to try and draw that white source. 
But is that good enough? We can have the same hand with one less pure steel and it's still just as good, or even one less pure steel and no pith and needle. So I think we will mulligan this. Okay, now this hand is a lot more explosive. We get turn one Mother of Runes to protect what we're doing. And then we can deploy uh, pure steel paladin. So it's going to be like a turn four kill, probably, unless we draw another Colossus Hammer. So we can keep this. Now we have to bottom one of these cards. So this Mox Opal doesn't like it's going to get activated anytime soon. So we're going to stick this on the bottom. Manifold Key. So this is some sort of um, Karn Echo's deck, my guess would be. Which means we might be more incentivized to play the Esper Sentinel here. Just so we can get cards. Because they don't tend not to interact that much with us. Uh, not with our creatures. Also means we can put the Colossus Hammer on next turn. With the Sigarda's Aid Hammer. Sure. I'm just paying for a Voltaic Key. They can have Force of Wills in this deck. But that's just something we're going to have to push into. We do get a card. If it's a Force of Will. So... Days is not something I'm expecting out of this deck, though. So I think we play out this Sagada's Aid first. And then we just play out the Wasteland here. Play out this Colossus Hammer. And we get attacks. So this is our opponent for 11. And they are dead on the following turn if they do not kill me or deal with my creature. They can chump block with uh, an Ezra Saga token, but they will need an additional mana source this turn to produce a token, which seems quite likely in their deck, to be honest. I could have taken a more conservative line and tried to waste down their Saga. If they have an Ancient Tomb, they can Ottawara and bounce our creature. Okay, or a City of Traitors, so they might be able to Ottawara us here. Looks like that's what they're holding up for, either that or activating the Saga. So I think we're just incentivized to waste sand this now. It looks like they're paying one mana. This looks like an Ottawara turn to me then. Yeah, sure. So we get rid of this because this can find Ether Spellbombs, which disrupts us. So I think the best option here is actually to play out the Sentinel and the Mother of Runes. Next time we can play Pure Steel Paladin and... This won't be equipable until we have Metalcraft, is the only issue here. Which is the one downside of the pure steel. So, we need one more artifact in order to turn on the Colossus Hammer. Uh, the pure steel Paladin Colossus Hammer. So, we could draw an Ornithopter, a Mox Opal. There's plenty of options for us. Okay, so they're paying two mana for Manny Fold Key. Okay, another Caracas isn't really what we're after here. But I think we just attack with our 1-1 one, one and play out the Pure Steel Paladin. So if one of these was an Ancient Den, we could have killed them this turn. But alas, was not the case. This is a pretty suboptimal draw for my opponent's deck, but they do have a load of keys in it, so it's going to be problematic from time to time. Lion's Eye Diamond. So this looks like an Echo of Eon's turn to me. So we have a Colossus Hammer if we get another turn that we can put in on Sigarda's Aid. And it'll also turn our other Colossus Hammer on for the... Yeah, we're just going to be drawing a load of cards this turn. So we kind of got hope that they can't go off this turn. Mesmeric Orb. Okay. So this allows them to toggle the top of their library and if they get something like a Mystic Forge into play. So we can still turn on the Colossus Hammer next turn with this hand. So we've gone through two, two draw sevens so far. Four mana makes me think it's going to be Mystic Forge. Khan the Great Creator. Sure. So I can't Colossus Hammer that way anymore. This could be an Ensnaring Bridge. I do have lethal with the net assist because the net assist will still attach because of the Sigarda's aid. So I can attach that to Aspera Sentinel and we can attack for lethal. But not through an ensnaring bridge, obviously. A Voltaic key, not very exciting. 
So Ensnaring Bridge is very, very hard for us to beat main deck. Basalt Monolith. Okay, so this lets them mill out their whole library now, if they want to. Because they have the Mesmeric Orb. So if they've got like, I don't know, like Narcomoebas and stuff. I guess we just have six this turn and save our own time. We do lose the option of Mother of Runesing there, so we have to get ready to turn off the yields if I see something going on the stack that I need to do anything with. All right, so they're just going to tap and untap their monolith. Okay, they can just generate a load of mana here, and then they're going to try and... What are they doing here? So this mills a library, and they can just use the monolith to tap and untap itself if they have some way of just milling their library and winning, like Narcomoeba's Dread Return type thing. Otherwise, they're just going to be making a lot of mana here. So they can get a Microsynth Lattice, but that doesn't necessarily stop anything from happening. Well, they can't get a Microsynth Lattice, actually, can they? Because they've already got the monolith. They're just going to mill their whole library here. It's only mills one card at a time, so we're just kind of watching them milling away. And probably leave it and cut back to when something relevant happens, I think. Okay, so they've milled themselves from Echo Beyond, which they're now casting. Because they have the Mox Opal. So it's just a way of, if they have the this selection of cards, and they can go again. A Lotus Petal, so we're, we're going again. They've cast three Echo V on this turn. I'm not really sure what they're doing. Like, if they just, this just got an ensnaring bridge, I'd probably lose the game. But they seem determined to try and win the game this turn. Alright, what are they doing here? Looks like they're going to be milling a bunch of stuff until they Echo again. Yeah, so there's the last Echo of Eons. So this is all of their Echo of Eons. Uh, this hand still kills with a Colossus Hammer, because I could fetch it with this, put it in, Sigarda's Aid goes on. So now they've got the Mystic Forge. So they can play cards from the top of their library, and they can manipulate the top of their library by using the Mesmeric Orb and tapping and untapping with Basalt Monolith. Now they do need to find a win condition. Which is going to be a walking ballista. Right, there is a fail rate to their deck here, but it seems like it's very unlikely to hit. There needs to be a selection of dead cards on top of their library. Okay, so we're we have Grim Monolith in, they're playing stuff out. Whew. A defense grid. Sure, I wasn't planning on casting any spells in your turn. They also don't have any more Echo Vions in their deck, so they're not going to be able to get rid of this hand that will kill them next turn if I get another turn. So a lot of our opponent's mana is gone now, right? So we've got three Petals, one Opal, two Opal, three Opal, uh, all four Grim Monoliths, three Basalt Monoliths, so we kind of need them to hit runner, runner, lands for a bit. Okay, so then they've got this. Is this one going to get an ensnaring bridge? Aetherflux Reservoir. Okay, so now they're going to play a bunch of spells out. Gain load of life and then dome me for 50. If you've not seen this card before, um, whenever you cast a spell, you gain one life for each spell you've cast this turn. So it's sort of like a you gain one life storm effect attached to it. And it says pay 50 life, deal 50 damage to any target. So they're going to do that and hit me. All right, that was a lot of hassle and a lot of them doing stuff there. Much of our sideboard is useful here, to be honest. Uh, much for the worldly lights, the deafening silence, even the ley lines because it shuts off their Echo of Eons plan. Now it's a case of how far do we want to go down that route and away from what we've got going on here is the question. So all of these are potentials of 11. So 
The pit and needle seems great here. I don't know if we're going to be doing like a life racy thing, so you can probably trim a shadow spear. The mother of runes can't stop Ottawara or Ether Spellbomb, so these are going to be no good. Some of our artifact mana is going to be a bit awkward in the face of Khan. I like Stoneforge Mystic Calder Complete because if they do land an early Khan, this can still beat through it. Sword of Fire and Ice, probably not necessary. Nettle Zist, not entirely sure how useful that's going to be. It is a creature potentially. I think we can probably bin that one off as well. We've got one, two, three, four, five things to find here. So we can probably just trim a little bit. Um, we've got a lot less artifacts to find now. So maybe we're trimming a Steel Shaper's Gift. And then some of our other bits and pieces. I do like Stoneforge purely because of how it allows me to win through a Khan. So we board those out and we maybe board out some artifact mana because of Khan. Can we board out an Ornithopter? Is that crazy? We kind of need to keep all our engine pieces in. Even if we go a bit slower. So maybe we're just making ourselves better against Khan. Like, I know I have boarded out. Like, when you play a combo deck, you shouldn't board out too much of your engine, as a general rule. But our creatures are going to be a bit stickier in this matchup anyway. So. Okay, we're going to try it like this. So what does our opening hand do? So we can play out Sentinel. With Sigarda's Aid. And we'll basically be on some sort of Urza Sag plan. This isn't very fast. I think we need to mulligan this. This hand has a deafening silence, and then we just play the Stoneforge Mystic game, which sounds fine to me. Um, we're going to put away the Ancient Den because we don't really want to have lands get shot off by Khan. So I'll play out this deafening silence. I'll stop them being able to do some of their combos. They're effectively like a weird artifact storm deck. Grim Monolith. That's your spell for the turn. And play out this. Just go get the Cauldra complete here. Just win on a relatively fair line that doesn't get interrupted by Khan as much. They can turn Cauldra into a, a creature and then an equips, right? But I do get to bash for seven. Okay, so a wasteland for the saga would be nice. A Grim Monolith, that's a spell for the turn. So just stacking up the manners. Okay. So this turn we call to complete. If we draw a land, what we can do is we can uh, start deploying some of these other things. But right now we're just going to attack with the biggest, fattest thing we can deploy, which is called to complete. Get a token on it. Go to tax. You do have to worry a little bit about the bridge. Okay, so they can start making creatures here. So that gives them a way of using their mana that gets around the deafening silence limitations. Sure. So this gives them the ability to untack Grimolis. So they can generate a lot of mana. These constructs are going to be pretty big. But Cauldra beats everything in combat because that's what Cauldra does. Ornithopter. Okay, so I think we just attack with the germ. They're also been hitting themselves with an ancient tomb here, so this probably just goes under the bus here. Just buys them a turn. Yeah, there it is. So the first strike will hit is then exile it. I think we play this out. Uh, so if we uh, we're in kind of a little bit of a bind here, because if we we can't cast spells for our indefinite silence. So if we go just cast this Stoneforge, this can go and find us a Colossus Hammer. And then what we can do with the Colossus Hammer is if we draw another land, we can put it in so we can play the Cigar of Day, then put it in through the hammer and make sure we have a lethal threat. 
Okay, so the deafening silence was good. Is the land of the void too excessive here? Like our game plan just worked. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it maybe. And that's a way of approaching this matchup. Here. Yeah, I think that's fine. Like if we have a hate piece and a threat, I think that's about the best we can hope for. This does let me waste on them, but I don't think it does anything else. We have to monitor it. Okay, so we have a hate we have lots of hate pieces. We have a very mediocre threat, but we do still have a wasteland. Like we boarded in these cards, to, so I guess we keep them here. We have a choice of whether or not we actually keep the otherworldly light here. Um, I guess the mox oval is going to be difficult to use um, because of our own silence here. Let's start with this in play. So they can't cast Echo of Eons while this is in play. This could be a task for one. It'd be pretty bad for us. A walking ballista. Sure. The plan is going to be keep pumping the walking ballista. Could well be. Play this out. Play this definitely silence out so they can't combo us. So we shut off both avenues, but we now we need to find a way of winning the game. So this can just get a load of mana put into it, but we can march by the world we light it away. Mystic Forge. They can play the top card of their library, but they can only play one card a turn. So weirdly, I think the Walking Ballista might be a, a bigger problem for us at the moment. Because we only have a one mana 1-1. One, one. A Wasteland. We could just try and Wasteland them out of the game a little bit. Right, we've got the time here. Uh, take this one out because this one automatically dies anyway and we're not going to play this out we can we can hold up the march by the wildly light and hit something like we could hit their lotus petal now but i think we're better off hitting the walking ballista they might just play a soul land and pump the walking ballista which gives us a really good target for the march by the wildly light then sure a grim one less let's just bin this off so we're going to take one damage from this it's going to get exiled anyway because of laying on the point but then we play out our one mana one one and we wasteland them again i think we just try and keep them off so artifact spells and colorless spells they can't play lands from the top of their library okay alternatively we just play out our threats like this and we just try and rebuy the same game that we had last time let's get the big boy and say go So we got three turns. Just kill them with this. Right, we've shut off a lot of their ability to do stuff here, and they are a, they are a mostly colourless deck. They'll have bounce spells, but I don't think they'll have a way of bouncing both of these in the same turn. So we, they're kind of a little bit on in on the Mystic Forge plan here. Okay. I'm not sure what they're trying to cast here because they can't cast non-creature spells. Okay, they just exile on top card of their library. You can keep a little running tab of things that they've got rid of, I guess. Okay, Ancient Den is pretty good for us here. We get to activate this and wasteland them. So these wastelands coming in pretty clutch. So what is this mana going to do for them? Three mana. Are they uh, echoing truthing my silence there? Sure. So this is the turn they've got to go big. And they can't do any sort of echo V on shenanigans. So it's all living off the top of their library here. And they don't have as much manipulation as they had before. Because they don't have the Mesmeric Corp. They've just got the Mystic Forge. They can untap their Mystic Forge to exile multiple cards. But they go to play a balancing act between manipulating their library and um, having enough mana. Okay, so this... 
Uh, I can use this to untap this to cast a ensnaring bridge, which I have to assume is in their sideboard. Mesmeric Orb. Okay, they're just trying to combo us out here. Now, they might be able to do it. I'm not overly familiar with this deck. We might as well just F6 as well, because we didn't have any plays this turn. So how much mana they got up at the moment? Because they got the key, they've got an additional source there. Okay, so they've got the ability to exile a top card of their library as much as they want here, so they should be able to have us. This deck seems to take an awful lot of operations here. Uh, first one I saw, I thought it was the um, like the hole breacher stompy one, a bit more than just a straight up mud one. So this is the deck that can't beat Null Rod or Collector Roof, which is quite a bold one to play in the format, given that Green Sun Zenith Collector Roof decks are have never been more prevalent than they are now with all the Fiend Artisan builds. But power to them, like, if this is what makes them happy, they seem to be having a good time. Far too much clicking for my liking. Like, they're down to eight minutes left on their clock. Like, they should be able to win here. But every card that they are... So, that well, obviously, the Mystic Forge exiles it anyway, but they're... Uh, they've got a fail rate here. We might be able to hit it. I think it probably is deterministic actually think about it right because the basalt monolith means that they only ever get the cards they want to get off the top of their library but they have to be in the right order like if they get to a card too early when they don't have the mana when they because they need to set up their mana and then set up the big things so there is a potential fail right here that we can hit They are down to 17 cards, 16 cards, 15, it's a little countdown. They haven't actually cast that many spells, right? They've cast a few, obviously, but they, to get over 50 life, they're going to have to gain 61 life. So they've cast 15 spells this turn. So they should be able to do it, right? Because each one gains an incrementally higher amount so it's 17 life yep so they cast the next one so they need to cast another spell basically sure and then they target me and then i die and that's the end of an incredibly tedious bit of uh coverage there that you had to sit through along with me there there we go there's ether oh they're still they're still starting out instead of just shooting us Oh, they've only got eight cards left in their library. There we go, finally. Sure. Um, yeah, that was one where my turns were very quick and their turns took forever. But unfortunately, we did not win that one, so we are on to the next round, 0-1. We're into round two. We're on the play. This is what our opening hand looks like. Uh, this can play a Stoneforge Mystic into Urza's Saga game, which is fine. Like, it's, it's good enough for Death and Taxes. It's good enough for us, right? Um, this isn't really what we want to be doing with Hammer Time, I don't think. But we have Mother of Ruins into Stoneforge, which is going to be good against a lot of decks anyway. So I think we'll keep. We're also going to get a little bit of value because our opponent doesn't know what we're playing. And at any point we can spike one of the things that enables us and just clock them way faster than they're expecting from what looks like a Death and Taxes deck. Okay, scoring time. This could be Delva maybe? Or some sort of control deck. The, the fact they're letting us pass with Mother of Runes is pretty good. So if we play out the Stoneforge here and it gets countered, that is a bit of a pity. But we have the as a plan for next turn. Unfortunately, we have to play it this way around. Okay, so this resolve, that's good for us. Our opponent could be a combo deck. I think we just get the call to complete here. It's the quick clock. And we, because we got the Mother of Runes to back it up, seems it's fine. So our opponent could be playing a combo deck because they haven't pondered, they haven't done anything with their first scoring turn. In the face of a Mother of Runes, that's relatively telling. They might not care about what our board does. Basic Island, so that rolls out the Epic Storm. 
the Epic Storm when he runs non basics now. Right, so we have another Stone Forge here. We play this this out. We hold the Caracas back, I think. Right, let's activate this. So here is our big lad. Uh, we can get attacks. So our opponent could be show and tell or sneak attack. So I'm going to just hold up the uh, Caracas here. But I could deploy the Shadow Spear. But I think I'm better off just making sure that I don't lose to like sneak attack Emrakul or something. And hopefully next turn we can draw the uh, Sigarda's Aid and just kill them. It's a plan. Tropical Island, okay. So this is looking maybe more like some sort of Bant control deck or like a Fera deck. So the Caracas play is not something I'm going to be rewarded for, I don't think. They could also be the the blue-green show-and-tell Eureka deck. Okay, so we are Rug. And an Uro. So we're looking like we're probably one of those four color control piles or it could only be three color because we've only seen three so far but i don't think it's unreasonable to uh, assume that they could have source to plow shares i need to play around here so cigar's aid can win us the game let's see what we draw that is not cigar's aid is it Plant this ancient den. I don't think we need to worry about our life total too much here. I think we just attack with these two creatures. And we will still hold up the Caracas, but this time we're doing it because our opponent could be playing an Uro. Uh, if they can hard cast an Uro next turn, we want to be able to make sure that it's not there to block. Sure, a Force of Will. Pitching Hydroblast. Main deck Hydroblast. That's an interesting one. So now they've got one, two, three, four cards here. So they need a little bit more work to get into the old Uro plan. One, two, three, four. So a fetch land for a green source, they can play the Uro, but playing it into an onboard Caracas doesn't feel great. Narset part reveals. Sure. So This isn't a lot, is it? Five, six, seven, eight. I don't have lethal here. They've got a ponder. Are going to be throwing out their ponder this turn. I have eight draws that instantly win the game if they resolve. Cost your paladin. Because uh, I've got one, two, and this will be the third artifact, so I can equip it for free. Or the cigar to save, so when I play the Colossus Hammer, it just clips on straight away. Our opponent did not shuffle that library, which is not great for us. And they've shown us the white source as well. Four cards in hand. Play this out. Play this out. We're not too worried about our life total here. So this is going to attack the Narset, so they can't get another card out of it. And this is just going to attack them. So their life total is... It's going to be two turns clock either way, so I may as well stop the Narset drawing them a card. I'm going to hold up the Caracas the same reason as last time. If they cast an arrow, I want to be able to make sure it's not there to block. And I might need to use my mana on my turn, so I may as well hold it open. It's more or less free to do, because I don't really want to play out more Mother of Runes necessarily. Like, Wrath of God doesn't do it here, or, or Supreme Verdict, because this is indestructible. Okay, we've got a bit of movement here. A Minskambu. This doesn't really do anything. So they're going to sacrifice this. And presumably target one of my creatures. So they're going to target my Mother of Runes. So our opponent hasn't played a land yet. So they might be trying to bait me into... Um... This is interesting, actually, because I, I can give my my germ token pro-white so they can't kill it. 
with a prismatic ending this turn. I think that's the correct play here. Feels like that's what this play is for, right? Or they might just be trying to draw the card here, right? That's also fine. Okay. I'm not sure if that play was the thing that won the game or the fact they didn't have anything and were trying to draw something with Minsk and Boo. But, all right. So we won game one. How do we feel about game two? So, Marks of Otherworldly Light. So, so Leyline can stop Uro, but I don't think we care enough about Uro. Marks of Otherworldly Light for one mana can clip a Boo token. We ideally want to be doing our stuff before then. A Deafening Silence isn't something we need. Swords to Plowshares can hit the Uro. I think our main deck is actually just almost pre-boarded here, right? Like, as a Saga is always just good in control matchups. We've got a Caracas to deal with in if we need to. Ideally, we're just going to be bigger than it anyway. Like, all of our threats outclass the Uro. They either have this sort of Fire and Ice so they get through it. It's a Cauldra or it's got plus 10. So I think we're actually just fine here and we're just going to resubmit. This hand doesn't do anything, so we're going to Mulligan. This is another one of those, like, medium hands here. Like, Steel Shaper's Gift is going to be good, but only if we draw one of our combo pieces. That's probably still going to be better than the second Esper Sentinel, right? I think so. So our plan is to play Esper Sentinel, Stoneforge Mystic, and then Urza Saga backup plan. Okay, our opponent's pondering. They did not shuffle their library. That's less good for us. Okay, okay, we drew another Esper Sentinel anyway. Extra glad I put the first one back then, or the second one back. Sure, so they can spend their turn prismatic ending in this. So that I don't draw a card. Yeah, so they're paying the extra mana so that I don't draw a card. We've got choices on our turn here. So if we play out the Stoneforge Mystic, if they force of will it, they're going to be down to like no cards, which is pretty nice. The question is which land do we play? So we play out the Heirs of Saga, it means we're going to have to take a turn off using our Heirs of Saga mana to make the Stoneforge Mystic happen. Which is, yeah, if you want to put the Cauldron off the Stoneforge, the Heirs of Saga is going to be not getting the maximum value. It's a little bit tricky this one. I think we play out the Stoneforge off of this. We want to we want to leverage the maximum amount of mana. Like if this gets Force of Willed, we want to just get the maximum amount of value out of every single card that we cast. So this will get the Cauldra, which means they have to answer this or it's going to just bat them up good. Now, they've certainly got answers. They're a source of Plowshares Prismatic Ending deck. So I suspect they can deal with the Stoneforge. But again, it's drawn us a card that we might be able to do, do something with later on. We're just trying to get as much value as we can. They shuffled with their Ponder and they played a Wasteland. If they snap this Wasteland off on our Ancient Den, that's very good for us. Oh, love it. Absolutely love it. So now we play out the actual Wasteland target. They can source power shares our mystic in response if they want. Feels like they're just trying to use the cauldra. Just trying to remove the cauldra with a source of power shares that way. So getting it down and then dealing with it. Because they've got the one white mana open. Yep, there it is. As predicted. So our opponent's down to two cards, but we start activating our other saga next turn. Now generate us a load of power, and then we can just start going to town at that point, I think. Uh, we are vulnerable for something like a meltdown. But we can... We're not, we're not going to waste on them here. We're just going to play out our Ancient Den. We don't need to play out the, the Thopter this turn. Uh, is there anything they can flash in here? Hull Breacher they can flash in? I don't really want to jam this into a Hull Breacher, so I'm just going to pass. 
No hull breach. Sure. Express of iteration. It's a good card. Tropical Island. And the card they put in their hand. And a turn. Let's make a large man. So we're going to get Minsk and Boo. We're going to get Pithany Long Minsk and Boo, I think, right? Minsk and Boo is what scares me the most, I think. Minsk and Boo, Timeless Heroes. Then we we'll play out an artifact. Play out a wasteland. Let me wait on the wasteland here. Yeah. Let me just attack with our. We're going to waste them off of red, so make meltdown more difficult. And expressive iterations more difficult. See if we can cut them off of meltdown as an out. So we're presenting lethal on board, so they need to have something good here. This is like an Uro, that's not going to do it, right? 12, 13, 14, 15 if I play out any artifact. Sure, so that was a, a pretty elementary victory, that one. I think this deck just lines up very well against this sort of control -y decks like this. Like, you're just playing must-answer threats that require two-for-ones pretty much for them. And then Urza Saga is just a beating for control decks. So, all right, let's go into the third round. All right, we're on the play for this round, and I'm not entirely convinced this hand is... It is it's a turn three kill, right? No. It's a turn... Yeah, it's a turn three kill. So turn one, play this Steel Shaper's Gift. Turn two, Pure Steel Paladin. Turn three, Steel Shaper's Gift for Hammer. Play two Hammers, kill them. Is a turn three Goldfish good? Um, I guess I did want to test the Steel Shaper's Gift in this deck, so maybe this is what we do. Like, my instincts tell me that I should be mulligan this one, but I think I'm going to keep it purely for science, so let's give it a go. It's kind of annoying that we have to do this straight out in the open here. This giving us the extra thing for Metalcraft is pretty good. Just get a hammer. Hmm, there are a lot of things that have to go right for this, but... Maybe we'll get there. I've definitely played against this Joe L person before. I can't remember what they were playing, though. Maybe we should pay more attention to that in the future. Snow-covered swamp. This could be the like mono black stompy deck. Um, not like the silly one I played on channel the other day, but the sort of one with Helms of Obedience and things in. Sigarda's Aid. That's a pretty good one. But we play out the Paladin because then we have a creature that can attack. So next turn, we have Lethal if our guy survives. Now they're a black deck, they could have a Sudden Edict. Which could be bad for us. They could just Fatal Push it now. Into okay, so they're a reanimator deck. So I need to okay, an Arcan of Cruelty. If they reanimate this, we probably lose the game. It's going to be very difficult for us to come back on this one. Okay, the blue black reanimator. I do remember this player now. Yes, animate dead. So we're going to lose our Arcan and a card from our hand. So we're going to be rooting around in the dirt for some sort of creature here. All right, it's going to be a tricky one. Pure Steel Paladin. Now, the issue here is if we play this Pure Steel Paladin and, attack, and they attack, then we lose it. So this is a challenging one to puzzle out. If we get Steel Shaper's Gift for Nettlesis, that can potentially give us a creature. But we have, what is this, eight a turn. So we got three, three turns including this one, right? No, three turns after this, right? Eight, eight, and then the one. But opponents on six cards. Can we realistically beat from here? Uh, well, they've already seen some of our stuff, so I think we just have to try and find a way to field as many creatures as we can and just get one combat step through. Now, if they hit us with target this guy, that's going to be bad. So, are we wanting to play this Sigarda's Aid? 
or we're probably discarding the Cigalas out this turn. And we need creatures. Yeah, I don't think we can play the land. I think we need to hold it so that we have maximum amount of buffer of cards to discard. We kind of need to draw like Ornithopter. If we can go like Ornithopter Pure Steel Paladin next turn, then we might be able to still win this game. But it's not looking great for us. Like if they deploy an additional threat, then we're just dead, I think. Or if they thought sees us or something. Okay. I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter what they take, they still win the game, right? It's because I don't have a lot of... Like, they're probably just going to take the Paladin here. And then it means we need to draw two creatures. Which isn't going to be enough. I think we just concede it there. Alright. So, Reanimator. We'll have these in. Source to Plowshares is fine if they're doing things like they did just then. Nettle Cyst is not really going to do it here, I don't think. Sword of Fire and Ice, probably not doing it here. Pithing Needle can name Grizzlebrand. Don't know if we're going to be spearing them here. Like, if they get a guy in, I don't think we can raise any of their guys. So that's not worth doing. Uh, Mother of Runes, how useful is Mother of Runes here? They're more going to be dealing with our... They're not really going to be dealing with our creatures here. I think we probably can trim on, like, Mox Opal. Cauldra... Actually, the Stoneforge plan here doesn't look great. So maybe we just take out the Cauldra here. But the Cauldra is... Oh, the Cauldra is still fine, though, isn't it? Like, it's still a thing that beats down and wins us the game. Maybe we don't need all of our Swords to Plowshares. But I don't know, maybe we can trim a Steel Shaper's Gift. I don't want to get flooded with those. All right, let's, let's try it like this. So this hand has the ley line, but doesn't do anything. So I think we have to mulligan this one. This hand doesn't have any white swords, I don't get to play the game. This hand requires a lot of work. I can source to plowshare as a creature, but I think we still mulligan again. Okay. So, I don't think we can go to three. So, we don't need the cigar to Zode here. Like, maybe we're just in the situation of racing here. So, this would be one, two, three. We still need to get rid of another card on top of this, don't we? Yikes. Um, is that right? I think we just lost this game, right? So the previous build of this deck that I ran had more mana sources. So this hat deck has less mana. So far, it hasn't. I haven't been able to do the thing at any point really this game, in this league yet. Even though the deck's got more ways of getting the thing because of Steel Shaper's Gift. So that's interesting for me. We've basically just been stone forging people out so far. But we'll see. It's still time. Ponder. Okay, that's good. That means we're not immediately dead unless they have a Lotus Petal. Okay. A Cigarda's Aid. I think we play this out now, so at least it's in play. Like, holding up the Source to Plowshares there, I don't think it does enough. Like, they're not putting in hasty threats, so we can untap and kill it just fine. So if they show and tell, I get to put my Pure Steel Paladin. I've also got Caracas for a Legend, so they're probably going to... Okay. What they take here will tell us a reasonable amount about their hand, I think. I suspect it's probably going to be the Plow, because I can't do anything with Pure Steel yet. Yeah, it feels like well, this game is just over. Okay, that's a real magic card. I do require another mana source to start using it though. The Caracas is hopefully keeping at bay some of their threats right now. Into So this is just going to go and get them the Arcan of Cruelty, which I can't do anything about. So we're going to lose our Pure Steel Paladin. And then they're going to kill us in pretty short order. Although we can maybe make an Urza Saga token, untap, get the trigger, put the hammer on it, and bash. 
but whether or not that's going to be enough to break through their uh, enhanced life total because the arc of cruelty drains life. I suspect it probably will not be. And exhume. Sure. So we're going to lose our pure steel paladin and some life. Not great. So we need to hit a mana source this turn to even be in this game, I think. A Colossus Hammer, you say? So... Like, I think we still play it out because we're losing it anyway. It does help us get Mox Opal to be a real land soon. But we don't have a long time because this, is, this bash is for nine. So we take one hit and we get one draw step that's got to be like Source to Plowshares or something. But our opponent is a blue deck, so they might just be able to counter what we do. Right, if we'd have hit a Mana Source instead of that Colossus Hammer, and then we're at least live to drawing another Colossus Hammer on the final turn to kill our opponent. So we definitely had a had a line that could have worked because we could have made this at end of turn, untapped, this dies, gets us Colossus Hammer, so guys A puts it on our guy, we draw Colossus Hammer, cast it off the Caracas, bash for like 24, 25, something like that. One, two, three, four. I'm not really sure what they're in the need to cast here. Like, I've got no cards in hand. They've got an Arc of Cruelty in play. Ottawara. Okay, they're bouncing the Urza Saga. Not sure how worried they really need to be about that. I guess they don't know what's coming in off the Saga, so maybe there's like some random thing I could have. Now we just source to plowshares to buy us a turn. Or a crappy 1-1. One -one. Sure, we'll concede the game. Yeah, I don't felt like it did not really have a leg to stand on there. Like this, like reanimated decks are just doing a more broken thing. Like they're easier to disrupt, generally speaking, reanimated decks than what we're doing. But they are just intrinsically more powerful and we mulligan to oblivion. We're on the play. This is our opening hand. This one looks more like the sort of hands I've been wanting to have. So we're going to keep this. We get to play out Sentinel on one. Uh, I don't think there's a need to play out the Mox. Uh, maybe there is. I think we'll play out the Mox. Just in case there's some sort of like Trinisphere type action. I'd rather have that in play. Which means if I draw. Okay, and there's a Saga. This could be... As a saga and Mishra as well, this makes me think that our opponent is playing 8 cast. So this turn we probably waste down the Urza Saga here. Okay, so they've got enough to actually have some mana this turn. Okay, but they're not using it. Our own Urza Saga is pretty, pretty nice here. But I think we just have to waste down this. And then I think we... Play this one out. Okay, that just straight resolved. This one is, means that if we draw a Colossus Hammer, it just works. And we can play off of this and then use this one to play the Steel Shaper's Gift. So we're, we're in okay shape. Seat of the Synod. Sure, this person, this little uh, Esper Sentinel's really taxing them out of the game, which is nice. I don't actually think it's right for a cast to bother with that. I think it's just better to have the velocity. But obviously it depends on what's in their hand. Okay. So now what are we doing? The Crackers is going to keep at bay a lot of their things here. Like Psy and Emery are both going to be problematic for them. Okay, let's get this Colossus Hammer. Attack. What am I doing? What am I doing? I got the Colossus Hammer and forgot to put it on. Oh my god. That's so embarrassing. Unbelievable. I just... Oh, it was such a... Oh, jeez. Thought Monitor. This is going to cost me a game. So our opponent should be on eight. Uh, should be on eight, yeah. But unfortunately, I'm an idiot. Let's try and do what we should have done last turn. Now they've got more cards in hand. Okay. So let's stick this on our guy. Can we play this guy out while we have Metalcraft? Just in case something 
Trixie happens. Okay. We're going to leave the hammer on the sentinel just because it means that we're basically guaranteed to draw a card this turn. Not from that one, though. We need them to have a different. What have we got? Emery. Okay, that doesn't draw us a card. We can bounce this, though. So we don't have to worry about this activating. Okay, so this is the one where we get a card, unless they pay um, like 11 mana, so. A Mother of Ruins. Not that exciting on this board. Does mean that we can push through some damage soon. But I think what we're doing this turn is just getting the, um, the trample equipment, Shadow Spear, sticking on our massive guy. Lotus Petal. So Ottawara currently costs three mana to bounce because of the Emery. So they've got two up at the moment. So Ottawara doesn't do it for them. Okay, we're not planning on winning this game by casting any more spells, so. Can we get the bits in? No. Sure. I'd like to add some mana, please. And then we will go searching. Give me that Shadow Spirit, please. I would very much like to draw a card. Cool. Um, let's begin sideboarding. Deafening Silence is good against them. Lane on the Void has text, but I don't think it's got good enough text. Much of the worldly light blows up enemy sagas. So I think we want these. Sword of Fire and Ice can help us get through some of their things. I don't think this is a net assist game. The Mother of Runes is fine here, but I don't think we So they usually have, what, two dismembers, an Ottawa that I can't t uh, defend from, and need to spell them that I can't defend from, so I don't think these are actually gonna do us anything here. Uh, the Pithing Needle can name Emery. It can name, I don't really want to name Urza Saga. Uh, it can name Psy to stop them drawing cards. It can name one of the baubles if they leave themselves in a position where that's going to be good. So I think we probably have to trim on these a little bit. Steel Shaper's Gift. We want less one drops in the face of Chalice. So we'll board like this and that'll be fine. So this hand stops our opponent playing multiple spells and shuts off a big part of their engine. But they will be on the play. So they'll be able to dump all their zero drops straight away. Uh, the Cauldron doesn't do anything. The Cigar Aid and the Pure Steel Pattern are kind of redundant copies of each other. This does answer as a saga. So it's basically a case of this hand that means I have to draw what any of the four equipments, the four Stone Forges, that's eight. The two Steel Shapers Gift, that's ten. Uh, the other equipment is still fine as well. Um, is this one worth keeping? Hmm, I think we'll keep it. It's pretty marginal though. Like, if our opponent has a very good turn one, then we could just be so far behind anyway. Okay, a seat. And a zero drop. And an emery, by the looks of it. There it is. Okay. So I can get back baubles. I cast my own one of these, because a deafening silence will hit my own thing. So if they want to use their Emery, they don't get to cast any other spells. Potentially all right. Uh, this hand on the draw would be way better. Uh, on the play, sorry, would be way better than it is on the draw. But we only need little pieces to, to make this one hum, really. Okay, so one spell for this turn was Mox April. Now they can cast Psy. Yep, there he is. Okay, so I can... Wasteland here, or I can start playing out Paladin. I think I'd rather just waste down my opponent here. Constrict the resources a little bit. We could have played out the Cigar Aid as well, I think about it. That would have been a shrewder move. I'm playing very sloppy today, I'm sorry about that. 
Okay, so they're getting back a petal. One, two, three. So this isn't enough to cast any like thought monitor type shenanigans. And then a follow up Emery. Let's try and find something else. Sure. Nothing too exciting in there. Okay, so I have a Pithy Needle, so we can name Emery with it if we want to. Brings us close to having our Mox Opal online. Uh, I think playing the Pithy Needle out is better than playing the um, Pure Steel here, because we're not under a huge amount of threat right now. Kind of wish I'd have, been, I'd have cast that Cigar as Aid last turn, but not that it's going to make too much of a difference now, because all our equipments will have our Pure Steel online anyway. Trying to the Void on one. I assume this is going to be, which is not going to be great for us, but, okay, so these little guys coming in for a small amount of damage, but it's mounting up, we can cast this, we can't cast these now, but our guy can stop the damages here, so they can attack with everything, Force an additional one point of damage through, I think. Okay, so their card for turn is a Mishra's Bauble. And he's just going to come through in the sky. Yeah, so a March of the Worldly Light here can get rid of the Chalice and start things rolling that way, but we still need some actual real action, which is something this hand didn't really have, and now I'm being punished for it. An Ancient Tomb. Okay, that unlocks a lot more mana for them. Okay, so we've got Lotus Petal. Okay, now I can start making Thought Monitors. Yeah, this game is pretty over. I like, our hand needed to draw some sort of business. And just didn't, really. Like, they've seen eight more cards than us as well. Which is what their deck does, whereas ours kind of just draws one a turn. We can't just play Colossus Hammers now because of the Chalice. So we need two things before we can even equip our guy, and then we still have to try and get through this. Right, if we drew an Azza Saga earlier on, I think we'd be okay. Another Pure Steel Paladin. Like, I guess we're not not casting it, right? So if we do... So it's not cast either, so it's not if you cast an equipment draw a card, it's if it enters battlefield, so the Chalice will stop me drawing cards, even if I'm just using it to try and find something else. If I draw an Ancient Den, I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 mana. So, Ancient Den and another land, and we're looking at being able to hard cast a quarter, but it's going to be way too late by then. We need an Urza Saga to find us a Shadow Spear, I think. Or is this one going on? Just another one on one. Okay, so the match of the worldly light isn't hitting a chalice now. Why is it hitting is a better question. Probably the, the opposing Urza Saga. So you have to spend two mana on it. Uh, you can't block these. One, two, three, four. Yeah. So we're dead in the air next turn. No Plague Engineers in this deck. Concede. All right. So I don't think there's anything wrong with our sideboarding. I think our hand just wasn't very good and we maybe should have gone deeper. Uh, we've still got two Steel Shapes Gifts. That seems good to me. Maybe we just need more of our artifacts so we can do something. This deck feels a little bit light on business. This hand, though, is, is a real hand, this one. We get to do some things. Now, we're a little bit at the mercy of counter spells here. Okay, Ancient Den. Mox Opal. Ornithopter. Pure Steel Paladin. I'm the one doing an 8 cast impression, just playing out my whole hand. So next turn, we attack for 12. And we can Wasteland them on top of that as well. Or we can March of the Worldly Light. We have a lot of options next turn. Ottawara. A Vorble. That's not going to be amazing here. Emery. Okay. Let's see what they find. Okay, one of their dismembers is down. Chalice, not so important. 
Okay, yeah, I think this turn we just mash their mana. You know, oh, they, I don't... Uh, okay, yeah, because this exiles. We can exile this, so they can't get it back. And then we can wasteland them and just give them no mana sources. Which is how I quite often like to play Magic the Gathering. Uh, and that's a nice follow-up play if we need it. So we got this. Uh, we cast this Colossus Hammer. Does it draw us a card if it resolves as well? Okay, it's not resolving. So I think rather than mashing their mana base this turn, I think we need to play out Stoneforge and get ourselves a new Colossus Hammer. And then we attack with our 2-2. So they're going to get the Bauble back next turn, which is annoying, but it is what it is. Okay, so we've got a better target for a Wasteland now as well, because we want to be able to take them off Metalcraft as well as hitting their mana at the same time. So we can we can always hit this and hold up this, and if they put a, an artifact on the stack to turn their Mox Opal on, we can then exile it in response. Okay, this is the Chalice that we have an answer for in hand. Our opponent's on one card. I do get to rebuy a Bauble, though. So what we can do here is we can just use the Stoneforge Mystic to put the hammer in if we want. And it still equips for free. And then we can hold up our March of the Worldly Light in case we need it for something else. It depends on what we are drawing here, I think. Um, we can't get all of these things out, can we? So I think we just activate this is guess card. Yes, please. I would like to draw a card. Uh, so we can have a Free Mox Opal here. So we will equip for zero on this guy. And then we'll go to tax. I think. Uh, yeah, so this is cast. They can't get back half that lands with it. So we'll hit the seat of the sign. I'll just keep him constrained on mana. We can play out this Mox Opal, but we can't really do anything with our match for the world we like unless we pitch the Pure Steel Paladin to it. I don't think that's necessary just yet. Uh, we're representing a lot of damage next turn. So the enemy's probably going to have to chump block this turn. Unless they have something. Okay, so they've got Metalcraft now. And Thoughtcast, yep. That's a good way of trying to find an answer. They did not find an answer. Excellent. So we are 2-2, two and two, I think that is, after 4 rounds. So we've got one more round in us and then I can go to bed. All right, let's go. So what does this hand do? This hand makes a turn one. One. Makes a turn one Esper Sentinel. And turn two, I'll have three mana available to play Sword of Finite. And then turn three, I'll equip it. Is turn three equipping that? That can't be right. We have to mulligan this. So this doesn't have any white mana sources. I think we have to mulligan this as well. Yikes. Let's go again. Okay, this is an alright one. So, we have one card, two card, three card, four card. So, one card, two card, three card, four card. Yeah, so we put these three back. This allows us, if we draw a land, to make a turn to make this guy massive on turn two. That's about the best that this hand can do. So we roll with it. Put this guy out because he might be able to draw us a card, which might help us hit the land drop we need. Our opponent can just play a Chalice now and just ruin us. Or a Trinosphere, that's also very good at ruining us. This matchup, if I recall rightly, is pretty bad. Although they're more, they're more on the aggressive slant with the Den of the Bugbear. Wow. I really didn't like that. Sure. Okay, so they've kind of just evened up the mulligan. And then they're playing a Trinosphere. Okay, I see. I don't think they needed to do that. They could have just played the Trinosphere. So this game is about 90% over, I would say. So we are dead in, what, four turns? Is that that kills him? Something like that. Yep, so we mulligan to four. We had a hand that attacks for a lot if things go our way, but they did not go our way. 
Uh, Fable, sure. So, this is what? 13. Uh, we can't cast this. This is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, so if they have a mana source for Den of the Bugbear, we die. Cool, 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 cool. So they're probably just going to pitch their card until they find a mana source and just close the game this turn. No? Okay. They didn't want to do that. Yep, we are just dead here. All right. So this is the matchup we want March of Otherworldly Lights for to deal with their prison pieces. Source to Plowshares is also fine because they're a stompy deck. Sword of Fire and Ice seems pretty good here. Nettle Assist less so. Uh, the Mother of Runes is going to be decent at holding things at bay. Pithy Needle, they can have Chandra's and they have a Den of the Bugbear, but I think what we're bringing is just better and it's worth trimming that for that. I think they struggle to answer a Cauldra, so the Stoneforge Plan is good. Steel Shaper's Gift, again, is the one I keep coming back to and thinking, is that what I, where I want to be? Like, I probably need to have Mox Opals just so I can try and have. A fast turn here. Mm, I can't cut them all though, that's madness. Uh, we're trimming. Can't really trim our threat base either. Like the Shadow Spear is fine, like we can just play another side game and win the game that way. Like we're cutting a Stoneforge maybe. And we're just making our deck really inconsistent there, aren't we? I think we just want to go like Mother of Ruins into Stoneforge. We can probably trim on these. And maybe it just is a steel shaper's gift. It feels like the best thing my deck does most of the time is the yeah, Ezra Saga. We're definitely watching out for Blood Moon as well. All right, we will keep this. I think we have an answer for Chalice. We can play a Stone for you on turn two. Put this out. So we've got Basic, which is nice to have. So one more artifact on our Mox Opals live. I think this is going to be a short game one way or the other, which is nice because some of the other ones have gone on a little bit longer than I would have liked. Okay, so I get a free card here. It's a Stoneforge. Okay. So to trade, is this a, a Fable? So we can blow up the Fable if we want to this turn, uh, but whether or not we need to remains to be seen. Okay, as a saga, it's very good if we get hit by a. Um, Blood Moon, it's very bad. But I think we are right here to do this. And I think we just get the Cauldra here, right? We already have a hammer. How good is Sword of Fire and Ice here? This is one that might just be difficult to equip. Um, I guess the Sword of Fire and Ice can stick. That's going to be very nice for us. Uh, yeah, we can. Uh, this will give us Metalcraft. So I think this is what we do. And then next turn. Uh, yeah, so next turn we activate Stoneforge, put this in, and then we pay two to equip it to our Sentinel. And then we can bash and kill the Shaman. Now, there's lots of ways that that can go wrong between now and then. But we have a plan. And this is also a plan that doesn't use. Um, the stacks. We don't have to worry about Trinisphere or Chalice. If that's what we're deploying. Now Blood Moon takes out Urza Saga and ruins that plan slightly. Yep, just like that. But we have the Mox Opal, so we are okay to do this. So I think we are fine. We will not be blocking here. Okay. So we play this out. We activate this. Put this into play. So we now have three of these. So we pay one. And we play this. We keep this one in play. Pay one. Equip this to this guy. They have a dead. I get to draw a card at least, but it's not great for us, truth be told. Okay. Um, so next time we can stick it on an Ornithopter. But this is, we hopefully can kill the Reflection of Kiki Jiki here. But if they have a um, Fury, they can pitch cast it to turn. That's going to be very bad for us. Okay, just got another Fable. That's fine, actually. 
more or less, we hope. Uh, okay, so we would like to equip this to our guy. Uh, what is the best guy we can equip it to here? And does it matter is the next question. This is one additional damage, so I think we just equip it to this. We leave our white up. And then we go to attacks. You can't block. I would like to shoot your reflection of Kiki Jiggy before it ever gets to do anything. Okay, so we've drawn this, which doesn't do anything under the Blood Moon. Uh, what we can do here is we can take out their Chromox and stop them being able to cast spells as easily. Or we can take out a Shaman token. Or we can play out an Esper Sentinel so we have more ways of... Or oh, do we want the Mother of Runes? There's a lot of options here of what we can do. Like the March of the Worldly Light, we can take out the Blood Moon and play an Ezra Saga. But where are we really going with that? Um, this is a tricky one because we can we can scale the march of otherworldly light as much as we like because we've got a lot of white card in hand. So we could just take out the favor of the mirror breaker now. I don't hate that. Uh, that's fine. Let's exile this. Um, which were these white cards we least likely to use now? Hmm. Probably the Sentinel here. Um, and it has to be a second one as well, doesn't it? Probably just the Mother. Uh, we'll cast. Uh, X is currently four. Okay, so we just get rid of that one. Like, we don't want them to find the, the four mana thing that blows up loads of artifacts. That's how we lose this game, right? Goblin Rebel Master, sure. So we get to kill this one next turn. We can block one of this damage. Sure. What have we got here? Uh, okay, so we attack first because we draw a card with this. We attack. Goodbye, Rebel Master. An Ornithopter. It's not a very exciting threat, is it? Uh, so we can cast a Pure Steel Paladin here for next turn. So I think we probably save that one in the bag. Because we couldn't have killed him this turn with the, the hammer. So I think it was right to do that. And we just want to play out some guys that we can throw in the way if something happens. Uh, and then we'll go, yes. And we'll get a Shadow Spear in case something goes wrong here. And we'll say go. So yeah, like we could have just played the Colossus Hammer out there and bashed for an additional 10. Uh, but that doesn't win the game that turn. So there's no reason to do it that turn. It's better just to play these things, get more resources, and then if something happens, at least we can pivot more effectively. Okay. Uh, I don't really care about these. I need to keep Metalcraft up, so I'm just going to let this through and go to 8. I think they can deal me 6 damage. I don't think they can deal me 8 damage. Okay, so this taps for white, this taps for white, play out the paladin, taps for colorless, play out the hammer, we get to draw a card, we equip this for zero on our massive massive guy, and then we go to tax. there we go, okay, so that way I had more blockers in case there was like some hasty threats, like they're running like Layla or something, I had, I had my ability to block there, all right. I'm happy with how I sideboarded. I don't think I want to change this. Let's just go. This hand is a little weak to Blood Moon, but it does give me turn two massive lad. So I think we will keep this one. Play this one out. Play this one out in case there's some sort of Trinosphere type effect. And that'll do. And then next turn, we play this, we play the Colossus Hammer, and then we can Steel Shaper's Gift for another Colossus Hammer. If we need to. Now, if they cast a chalice, it's bad for us, but a rabble master, that's fine. We just let this sail through. Okay, so this turn, pay this out. Uh, oh, no, that one, this one. This one out. 
So this one for the Colossus Hammer. Yes, please. And now we have one, two, three artifacts. So we can uh, get the Steel Shapers for next turn. Okay, that guy's going straight under the bus. It's good. Just rest. I think we play out the other Sentinel this turn. It means if something goes wrong, we have another body. And we can still just do this and get the Colossus Hammer next turn anyway. So I feel this is the way that makes us play around the most things. Chromox. Am I going to draw some cards? Okay. So we've got another mana source that we can use. And another artifact. So we can pivot on Tierza Sagapan if they didn't Blood Moon. But if they Blood Moon this turn, they're dead anyway, right? So Fiery Confluence. Destroying a lot of my artifacts. That was the big one that I was worried about coming down. Sure. Okay, so now we can make some Urza Saga tokens. Let me play this out. Um, we may as well... Uh, wait, so this is one artifact, two artifact. So if we make our guy first, then we can steal Shaper's Gift as well. So I think we probably just do that now. And then we can activate this for this. And we get a Colossus Hammer, I think. Or do we... Uh, it's a sort of Fire and Ice just better here, right? Uh, no, it should, oh, I think I probably should have got the uh, Sword of... Um, I think we will cast this one out now and keep it. If we've got the Sword, then we can get the other one off of there. But we don't know if that's actually going to survive. So we're going to cast this now so this guy can't be furied. Is the idea. We just want to make our guy as big as possible. And then next time we can put Shadow Spear on it and another Colossus Hammer. If we so wish. Now if they've got another Fiery Confluence then that's bad for us. Okay. Uh, they need to have Gone I think. The Bounce Spell that costs 3 mana. So I think we've just got them here. Uh, I think we activate this now in case something goes wrong. I think that's the Safest play here. Get Colossus Hammer. We will target this creature. We will use the ability. We'll play this and play this out. Yeah, okay. Excellent. Let's go to the deck. So we got 3 2 with Hammer again. Um, it, it, honestly, today didn't the deck didn't feel very powerful. The other two times I've played it, I felt. Like, the things I was doing was a lot more unfair. Um, I know that's just how the lines shake out sometimes, but I feel that what I was doing best was, like, the Urza Saga and Stoneforge Mystic Plan was generally better. Like, there were, there were definitely games where we just put a big hammer on the guy and it looked really good. Um, like, that last game, we just managed to overpower what our opponent was doing. But I don't know... I don't know if it... It was enough sometimes. Like the uh, the suite of things we're playing with here doesn't feel incredibly strong. Some of it, like the sort of fire and ice, was excellent in that game. The nettle cyst was never a thing that I played. Uh, I did leave it in and not sideboard it out one time, but again, it didn't feel amazing. It was just a lot of Urza Saga being a really strong magic card. Although occasionally we did have some hands that lined up. But the mana in this deck was worse than the last two times I played it. Because I found myself mulliganing quite a lot. I went to four on more than one occasion this league. Now, you know, that can happen. But we are running eight colourless sources. So maybe that shouldn't be the case. Like, I know the other builds I was looking at were only running seven colourless sources. But they, I've replaced a spell with a wasteland. So I still have... So functionally, I have more mana in my deck if I need it. Um, so there is that. Honestly, uh, I'm not sure what to think with this deck after today. It didn't... It feels like it needs something else. Um, maybe that other thing it needs is something crazy like Brainstorm, maybe. Because there's a lot of air in this deck. And a lot of your pieces individually are very poor. So if you don't put, you know, Colossus Hammer without one of your pieces isn't doing anything. And 
uh, Cigar de Zade without one of your pieces isn't doing anything. You know, and Pure Steel Paladin isn't drawing you lots of cards if you don't, you know, it's not equipping if you don't have the other pieces. So you've got so many pieces that are just redundant on their own that maybe there's a better way of configuring this deck. Like if these Steel Shapers gifts were Brainstorm, that would be a start perhaps. And maybe if you're running like a a sort of brainstorming package you can trim down on some other stuff so maybe this deck should be like a blue white deck obviously that makes the mana base far more difficult to to puzzle through but a lot of the time you're relying on things like mox april i know um some other builds have been running a paradise mantle in the deck to help with mana uh, which i can understand but i'm not really sure if that would have helped too much uh, especially with some of the hands I was mulliganing it was mainly because I didn't have any starting coloured mana to work with um, the sideboard uh, was fine I think it was like I brought in all the pieces at different points that's usually a good sign like I've u I used every card on my sideboard across the league so yeah can't argue with that um, I'm just not sure like, when this deck's good, it feels good, but then it does have too much air in it. I don't know. I'm going to have a think. Maybe I'll try and brew some sort of blue-white version, uh, utilising Brainstorm Fetchlands and stuff, just to just to smooth it through. And there's probably a few, like, extra little nice bits and pieces I can put in. Maybe Mother of Ruins can, can go for something a bit more exciting as well. Um, I'll have to have a think on that one, though. But I think there's definitely a lot of space for cuts, though. So, like, you could cut the Pithy Needle from the main, along with... So, let's say you cut the Pithy Needle from the main, the Nettle Cyst, the four Steel Shapers Gifts, uh, possibly even Mother of Runes. So, you're looking at, like, nine cards to fiddle with, which is which is a reasonable amount there. Maybe instead of playing Wasteland, you can trim these down um, and have like more spells. So if you're playing Cantrips, you can probably run like a 16 land deck with your four Saga. Like I'm thinking back to when I used to play a lot of Rug Dell, which was like the main deck I played for a few years way back when. And you used to be able to run like 16 land decks um with, with with like wastelands in and stuff so so maybe 60 land deck with saga obviously saga needs a bit of resources to work to like to actually the constructs but we do have mox opal which is effectively like a land in this deck quite often and we might be able to just play more artifact lands so metalcraft is online more because sometimes metalcraft didn't feel like it was readily available to me so maybe that will help It'll make us more vulnerable to the things that we're already vulnerable to. I don't necessarily think that's a problem because, like I said, if you're already losing to... Uh, if Meltdown is going to be beating you like 80% of the time when they cast it, I don't think making it beat you 85 or 90% of the time is a, is a cost, to be honest. Because like, pretty much like you're not going to win the game with a pure steel paladin. And that's the only thing that really survives Meltdown here. I guess Stoneforge can, and if you... The Stoneforge Cauldra plan is basically, I think, how you beat Meltdown, because you slap this guy into play, and they can't Meltdown it. But obviously, a lot of decks have Meltdown, aside from Delver, tend to be like Jeskai decks, that, or Grixis decks, where they can make you either Sacrifice it, or Source to Plowshares, or Prismatic ending it. So, all right. I think I've uh, spoken about this one enough. I'm not, I'm not convinced by this one today. So this is the third time I've played this on my channel. Um... The builds have changed. This is this is quite a different build to the previous ones. I think I preferred the previous ones. But again, it could have just been the draws that I had and the fact that this deck is kind of all in on its opening hands a little bit. And it's certainly susceptible to um, just getting some pretty naff draws and things that don't act well. Or having single pieces taken apart so it kind of just collapses your house of cards. But I'll have a think and maybe we'll try, maybe you'll see this deck again, but in a quite different configuration in like a month or so's time. All right, I'm done for today. So if I could just plug myself one little bit and say, if you're still watching this video, which, well, everyone who's listened to me is, because that's how things work. Um, if you could just 
scroll down and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already because I need subscribers and it costs you literally nothing to support my channel by subscribing. And if you know anyone else who might be interested or if you know any groups that are, that are where the content I'm making would appeal to them, by all means post it. I'm always happy to get more people finding my channel. I'm hoping to hit a thousand people by New Year's. That's my target. So if you can help me reach that, that'd be great. And yeah, I think we're done there. So thanks for watching and goodbye.